So the fifth step of designing your social media strategy is to start to think about what the tactics will be, right? So by this, I mean, what is gonna actually happen? And you need to write this out all ahead of time. Who is gonna be responsible for what? Who's gonna post on your Twitter content? Who's gonna post your Facebook content? Who's gonna monitor and respond to comments that other consumers have left on those different channels, right? How often will you post and what kind of content will you post, right? So come up with a, a clear, crisp strategy about what that will look like. Often putting together a schedule of some sort where you can block out where that content will be. You need to create that content ahead of time so that it's all ready to go. And there's tools out there like Buffer and Hootsuite and TweetDeck, for instance, that will allow you to schedule some of these things ahead of time and make sure that they're available when uh, it's best to see them. You need to think about what tools you use, like those tools. And finally, or in addition, you need to create a set of community guidelines. I recommend having a well-stated policy about what kinds of content you will allow to appear on your pages. Um, a lot of times, for instance, on a Facebook page, you have the ability to delete and um, to remove content. But before you do that, you want to have a set of guidelines to say these are the kinds of things we will and will not tolerate. Are these are the kinds of, this is the tone we want to see. Do you want a humorous tone, etc.? cetera, right? Um, and you want to make sure that that's all laid out ahead of time, right? Uh, that way, when something happens, you can point people to the guidelines and say, you know, we, we said this ahead of time. This is the way we want to run this particular page, right? The interesting thing about uh, the social media space, right, is that when I go to your store, for instance, I'm clearly in your space. And when you come to my house, you're clearly in my space. Social media is a joint shared space, right? It's a place where I have some presence and you have some presence. And so you really need to think about that as a community space rather than as your space in particular. Right? Implementation and control. Once you've come up with these tactics, once you've set them up, right? Then execute, right? Set up the platforms, should provide reports to stakeholders about how well it's going because that's gonna be a good way to uh, get by, further get buy-in and get more uh, funds and resources to continue to pursue the project. Um, and then, you know, you need to monitor the effects. And, you know, that really leads right into step seven, which is optimize. Track the data along the way, see whether or not you're meeting your objectives. If you aren't, think about a new way to alter that so that you can try to meet those objectives. Analyze those results as they come through. Optimize your strategy. Think about how to change it, how to improve it, and go back, right? Let me take a split second and talk a little bit about community guidelines, right? Community guidelines are very important. They set the tone for what the community is gonna be about and, and they create behavioral guidelines for the individuals as to what kinds of content they can see or not see. As I said, this is a joint community space, right? But when it's on my page, you know, it's kind of like playing in my front lawn, right? So I need, I can have some control over there. If I go to a, someone else's page, right, then the content is a little different. But we need to think about that as, as, as a brand and to how you're gonna deal with it. It can help diffuse potential confrontations to have those guidelines. And you can remind users of those guidelines whenever something arises that might be a problem. Eventually, right, um, you're going to have problems, but you're also going to have people constantly commenting about your brand and, and, and saying things. You should have a response protocol set up, right? How are you going to monitor for comments that are directed at your brand or not, maybe not even directly directed, but rather just mentioned in an off way? You should decide what to do if the comment is positive, negative, or neutral, right? How you're going to respond, how you might respond. And you should determine if the message is urgent and needs to be replied to right away. All this is going to help you monitor your overall reputation, but this is a protocol that you should have set up ahead of time. Uh, for instance, some firms have it set up that the whoever responds actually adds a couple of initials so that it's clear which user responds. As a human touch that responds, Right, um, it makes it seem less like it's coming directly from just this, you know, corporate um, overlord kind of thing, right? Um, and so these kind of things should be discussed ahead of time. It should be determined how these are going to be tagged. And there's software out there that will let you tag comments you need to respond to and then distribute them appropriately to different individuals. But overall, you should have set this up ahead of time, not be deciding how to do this on the fly. Finally, you know, the kind of extreme version of brand responses or responses or comments that you need to respond to is a brand attack, right? Someone comes up with thinks that there's something your brand has done wrong. They launch a big social media attack in this space. Um, and 
they, they start to attack your brand, right? And you need to figure out a way to respond to this. And you should have this plan set up ahead of time, right? You should act as soon as you have the information to act and you should determine if you should act. Sometimes that conversation may die off, but usually if it's gotten to the point where you're calling it a brand attack, it's not gonna die off anymore, right? Um, you should think about how you're gonna respond to the attack, right? You should think about it in terms of two different ways. One is the attack is true. Are they saying something truthful about my brand? Uh, you know, for instance, there's been some critiques about manufacturing things overseas, right? So maybe I need to think about how I'm going to address that situation if it comes up. But there's also rumors and speculation that occur that are completely false, right? So for instance, it could be, um, uh, there was, there's been some cases in the past of uh, pet food brands that have, uh, people have created rumors that they cause the pets to get sick, right? And so you should determine if that's not true, how do I respond to it correctly? How do I both create the content to combat that? One solution that you should always be thinking about and one, one solution you should always be working on is constantly trying to create positive content about your brand on a regular basis. Don't ever rest on your laurels and stop creating content because positive content drives out negative content in search and on social, right? So by having it up there, you're making sure that people don't see those negative comments that might exist. The truth of the matter is, is that we know that the vast majority of users never click to the second page of search results. So if your content is overwhelmingly positive on the first page, you're, you're never gonna see those negative comments. It might as well not exist. So that's something that's important to be constantly striving for independent of when you have a brand attack occur. Okay? That's social strategy. I hope you kind of have had some insight about how you might use different channels, how they might be put together into an overall cohesive strategy, and how you might use this to really propel the, um, the business objectives of your organization.